In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this fashion look portrait that I created as part of a workshop at the Bright Festival of Photography. I'm also going to show you how you can quickly and easily remove things like light stands and assistance out of the background and also the best way to create this energy and life into a gown like this by giving it a, a little bit of a flick and some air. All right, so here's an overview of the shot that I'm taking. You can see the Octobox there. Now, here's a wide angle version so you can see just how far back I am. But because I'm shooting on a long lens as a focal length of 200 millimeters, I'm actually seeing a much have a much narrower field of view and the actual the 200 millimeter focal length is going to compress the background a lot more. Now you can see my model set up here and I want you to notice the backlighting. So that's the sun that's uh, filtering in the actual image. The entire image is backlit. So I've taken my first exposure at f4 1 200th of a second iso 100 and i found it too light an area i didn't like it i wanted more drama so what i did is i stopped down to f5.6 just to get a bit more contrast between the bright light coming streaming in from the background and uh, the trees and everything. I wanted it a little bit moodier, not as moody as I normally shot, but I definitely wanted to drop that exposure. In terms of the lighting that I'm using, I'm actually using a medium-sized Elenchrom Deep Octa. Now, what I love about this light modifier is it gives a beautiful soft lighting but it also gives a lovely shape to the light and the thing I love and my preferred choice of any light modifier is I want a modifier that has an internal diffuser as well as the external diffuser so if we can see here you've got the external diffuser but then on the inside, there's another one. And that is the sign of a good softbox and it's going to give you good quality of light. The cheaper softboxes, and there are also some base models in the Allen Crom range that only have a single diffuser and that is going to make it a lot harder to control that light. It's got, a, it's got more edge to it and not as soft. So I recommend for if you're going to buy a large softbox or octabox make sure whatever brand you buy it's got that internal diffuser it's going to make a huge difference to how your lighting looks now in this uh, shot i'm actually using the godox ad 600 so 600 watt second battery powered flash the bonus of using a light like this is obviously no cords fantastic for outside and also the 600 watt seconds means it's powerful it's going to be able to over the power the sun if i want it to and that means that because it's got that extra power you're able to shoot very very fast so i didn't actually need all the power for this shot so you could probably get away with using something like the AD 200 flash but what you'd want to make sure if you're using the AD 200 it comes with a, a, another bare bulb head you'd want to swap over to the bare bulb head that's going to spread the light a lot more evenly over a larger space this Fresnel head, which is more like your speedlight style of head, is a more focused kind of lighting. Uh, so it, it doesn't tend to work as well in the larger softboxes. So stick to this kind. Swap the head over 
and use the bare bulb and you could easily get away with doing a shot like this with a larger octobox using something like the AD200 or even better if you've got a couple of them you can stack them as well. If you only have a speed light you could probably still get away with using a larger softbox with a speed light. What you might want to do is double it up, have two speed lights. And what this does is, is it doubles the power of your speed light, which means that you can, uh, you're not having to work your speed lights as hard and it means that you'll be able to shoot faster. So it's probably a great investment if you're going to be doing a lot of portrait shoots outside with speed lights. The shoot itself is pretty straightforward really, uh, considering there's quite a few moving parts. So basically, after I've got the base exposure that I want, I can now take a flash exposure. And so I'm using the Godox AD600. It's set to manual power and the power settings are at a quarter. So if you're using a speed light, remember your flash power is going to need to be more. My f-stop is 5.6 shutter speed of 1 200th of a second ISO 100. The focal length is 200 millimeters. So I'm shooting on the 70 to 200 at that full focal length of 200. That's what gives that beautiful compressed background. So it's just bringing the background forward and giving me that long narrow field of view. Finally, the most crucial factor in a shoot like this is you must shoot on a tripod and once you've got your shot lined up and set up it's crucial that you don't change any settings and you don't move your camera so make sure that everything's locked off because that's going to make removing the lights and everyone else that's in the frame out of the shot to create your final image. To actually get the air in this shot uh, and the life in the dress, what I'm doing is asking, I have uh, several people involved in this shoot. Uh, it was a workshop, so you possibly you might have an assistant to help them uh, help you do this, or I've also asked the model to flick the dress for me. Uh, that works as well. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I count them in and then get them to flick the dress. A couple of things that need to be remembered is you need to make sure that the dress isn't flicking too high and is obscured by the light because that's going to make it impossible to uh, remove the light in post-production. So they're the kinds of things that you need to be aware of when you're doing a shoot like this. And you also want to make sure that the uh, the flick is synchronized. Uh, just to add another element of excitement to the shoot, I've added, uh, and life to the shoot is, I've added autumn leaves uh, to the shoot and that is in camera. I just find it looks better if you can do it uh, in camera rather than uh, I've seen some uh, autumn leaf overlays and uh, often the, if the light isn't the same they, they don't look that great. So if you can get it this is the time to get it and it's a, a matter again of coordinating someone in the group to throw the leaves and if you don't have enough hands, this could easily be done uh, as something that you do after uh, the, the, you've done the flicking, then you can do the leaf throwing in another step and that's easy to merge those images together. So just so you can get a, a, an idea of how the direction goes for this type of shoot. Uh, this is me counting everyone in. All right, one, two, three. Good. One, two, three. Great. 
Now, one thing you want to watch out for is you want to make sure that you're not getting your softbox, your light in front of your dress. So you can see that this this dress has been flicked up too high and we've got the softbox in the background. That's going to be impossible to remove that in post. So you want to make sure that you've got good clearance. So once you've got your image, and I suggest that you take a number of exposures to make sure that you get a variety of shapes in the dress and the leave, the last thing you need to do is clear the set. So ask everyone to move, move the light out and keep your model in place and take a final exposure, your clean plate. So that's an image where you've just got the model and the background without lighting because this is what we're going to use to merge our hero shot with everyone in in the shot and the light with the background clean plate together and we're going to add some extra leaves to create our final image and we'll do that now using photoshop So to edit this image in Photoshop, what I've done is loaded the images into Lightroom. So I've got my hero and my background shot selected and I've edited both images exactly the same way. So I basically just reduced the highlights a little. It's a basic edit, a little bit of black and a white balance and applied that to both images so they have the same uh, look to them. So same color, basic. And the only difference is one has all the crew in it and the other just has the model in it. So to edit this image, you go to edit in, open as layers in Photoshop and we'll go to Photoshop now. There's my two images. So I've got my background and my hero shot selected. Now you go to edit, auto align layers, click on auto, hit OK. And what that does is it tells Photoshop to line them up because sometimes even when you're shooting like this, uh, one might be slightly out. So just even little small variations will knock them out of register. And what you're looking at is making sure that the background is aligned. So looking at the trees and the road and everything. And you can see when I drop the opacity of my hero image, you can see the background underneath is actually all the trees are aligned, ready for us to now combine those two images in Photoshop and remove all the additional crew out of the shot. So we're just left with the hero image. All right, so now that I've got my two images aligned, I can now easily remove the crew from the shot, leaving behind my beautiful hero image. So what you want to do is select the top layer. So it's the layer that's got the hero shot. We're going to add a layer mask. So it's this little icon here. Click on that. Now, choose a brush make sure that black is your foreground color if uh, this is your first time using layer masks i suggest you check out the tutorial all about layer masks that explains exactly what's going on so that you can uh, if this is a little bit confusing check that out first so got the layer mask selected black as a foreground color I'm going to uh, make sure blend mode is normal. Opacity is 100%. I'm going to get my flow up quite high because I'm actually going to be erasing all the way down to the bottom layer. And I'm making sure that I'll have my hardness set to about 50%. So I don't want a super soft brush, but I don't want a super hard brush. I don't want to see a trail of where I'm um, brushing back. All right, so once you've got that selected, 
I'm going to come in and wherever I paint with black is going to reveal the layer underneath. And it's as easy as that. So I'm brushing away to reveal the layer underneath, get rid of the whole crew just like magic. And it takes no time at all. Get rid of the shadows. Now you can see my brush, because I've got it set to 50% uh, hardness, I can actually see the edge there. So I'm going to increase, uh, decrease the hardness. So I've got a softer brush. I don't really want to see that edge. And you'll see now that that, that blends in a lot more um, seamlessly. So what I had on the day was the sun was going in and out. So the exposure of my uh, background shot is slightly different to my um, hero shot. So that's why you can see that on the road. You can see a little bit of a difference in color, but we can blend that in pretty well. So I'm getting rid of everyone nicely and seamlessly. I'm just going to brush on the road. All right, and now I can come in. I'm just going to increase my brush size and just blend that in a lot nicer there. All right, so got rid of everyone on camera left. Let's get rid of everyone camera right. Get rid of the light, get rid of the light stand. just like that. Now, if you happen to make a mistake, like I've just gone into the model there, just click to white and you can go back and you can do that as many times as you like. So black reveals, white hides. Okay, so, and the shortcut is X. So you can change from white to black quickly and easily. So I'm gonna go back to black and just continue removing everything. So you can see how quickly it is and the advantages of shooting this way. You can have your light much closer to the model. You get much better lighting, uh, but you've got to remember to shoot a clean plate. Otherwise you're in all sorts of trouble and you need to make sure that you shoot to tripod. It's going to make it a lot easier to uh, line everything up. I can do these now shooting handheld. I've done quite a few now handheld, but uh, it's risky and a lot easier to do when you um, just work off a tripod. So pretty happy with that. I've got rid of everyone. And you can see, just make sure I've got these last little shadows there out. Nice clean background. You wanna make sure that you get rid of the shadows on the ground if there's any of uh, the assistants there that were in the frame. And we've pretty much gotten rid of everyone. So you can see uh, that we've uh, cleaned that up nicely. And uh, the next thing I want to do is come in and just clean up the hair. And I also want to clone this uh, street sign in the background that bothers me. So to clone that, I'm going to create a new empty layer. So it's that little icon there going to choose my clone stamp. Uh, blend mode is normal and I'm going to bring my brush zero hardness, blend mode normal, opacity 100% and I'm going to bring my flow down to around 10% and I'm just going to come in and clone out this uh, background. So it's just basically a matter of selecting uh, an area just next to the area that you want to clone. So it's like we're grafting pixels from here onto pixels from this area. So to make a selection, what I'm going to do is hover over the area that I want to make a selection from, holding down the option on a Mac, Alt on a Windows, click and just brush over the top. All right, and then you can just 
brush that and you want to make maybe make your brush a little bit smaller this is just something that takes uh, patience the more you do it the better you get at it so I'm just kind of removing and what's good is it's it's out of focus so it's pretty much just a matter of getting rid of that sort of pinkish tone that is obviously not forest in the background there and just cloning over All right, so we've got rid of the sign in the background there. And the next thing I want to do is just do the hair, uh, get rid of the, because it's backlit, it just looks a little bit untidy. So I'm going to do a, a new empty layer for the hair. Just come in. And again, I'm just going to clone that uh, out as well. So just come in, smaller brush, and just come in and clone those edges just to tidy it up a little bit just brushing over that just to finish it off because it annoys me it looks untidy and that's the downfall of shooting a backlit subject with a shallow depth of field it really highlights the the hair the fluffies so if you've got a makeup artist, maybe just get them to uh, clean that hair up, put some silicon or something in the hair so it's not quite as uh, fluffy, but it's kind of hard to avoid. So you kind of uh, just need to do a bit of a quick retouch just to get rid of that. You don't want to clean it up too much. You don't want to get rid of all of it, but you just want to make sure that you've got a cleaner edge. And I might just bring my hardness up a little bit. So I've just got a cleaner edge there. All right. See how that just cleans it up? These annoy me in here as well. So we don't want to lose that nice halo, the, the backlit. I, I like it, but I'm just I just don't want to have it looking too untidy. Alright, so once I've done that, so you can see before and after before and after what I'm going to do is add a layer mask to that and I'm going to invert it so I'm going to hide it okay and and now I can come in with a, a white brush and just come in and brush in the areas that I want to uh, remove and this just makes it a little bit neater and you can control it more uh, so I'm just going to drop my flow and make it a little bit more um, sort of natural looking so you don't get that sort of helmet head can you see how I'm just like I can come in and use my layer mask and it's uh, I think a much nicer way to do it and you can come in and just do individual sections rather than getting rid of everything in one go So I'm sort of keeping the texture there, but I'm just coming back and cleaning up those annoying little feather areas and then just masking it back in. So like it's sort of a more natural look. 
All right, so it's just cleaned up all the fluffies. See that before and after, before, after. So the last thing I want to do with that is I just want to add a little bit of noise because if you come in, you can see where I've cloned. You can see that there's like the pixels where before I edited, you can see the noise and where I've edited, it's all smooth. So that's a giveaway. So what I like to do is just add some noise just a little bit that's obviously too much so it might be uh, and I just go up with the arrow until it looks good and just check so we've got before after might go a little bit more It's usually about a pixel so you can see that now before and after that's that that looks good just to get rid of that telltale line so you, now we can see before and after just cleaned it up all right and you can take a bit more time with that I think that makes a big difference uh, all right so you could say happy with that and leave it at that, but what I want to do um, is just add a little bit more texture to the dress. So what I'm going to do is combine all of these edits up onto their own layer. So that's Control Command Option Shift E is the shortcut, and that brings everything up on its own layer. And I'm going to duplicate that. Command J, New Layer. And what I'm going to do is come to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And what I want to do is just add a little bit of texture to the dress. So just looking at the dress, because we're going to mask this in as well. So a bit of texture to the dress. Add some blacks. Open up the shadows a little bit and a titch of clarity and maybe give it a bit more vibrance as well. Hit OK. All right, now you can see that that camera raw filter that we added has been added across the board. Now, if you don't want it everywhere, what I get again, what I'm going to do, create a layer mask invert it so basically that hides everything that we've done and I can come back in with a white brush and just brush the areas that I want to add that texture to this is just like a subtle little one percenter but I like to do that so you can selectively add texture to the dress and show it off a bit more. So let's have a look, we've got before and after. See that? It's not a lot, but everything, every little one percenter helps. And then of course, I also like to do that to the hair. Oh, Just give the hair a bit of a, or you can use the texture, texture brush tool, but this is just another way of doing it. And that just makes the hair stand out. go so we've got before and after just a little subtle thing and then probably the last thing I do is just give the skin a very light retouch so I've just added a new empty layer there and I'm just going to come in select the uh, lighten blend mode I've got my clone stamp selected flow 10% opacity 100% nice soft brush so we'll get it to zero hardness and I'm just going to come in and just clone back a little bit of those highlights that annoy me nose chin just clean up under the eyes there rid of 
that blemish. And finally, new empty layer. I'll just give the eyes a little bit of a sharpen as well. And that's pretty much it. Now you could continue on and do some more burning and dodging uh, of this image in the background if you wanted to. There's a million things you can do, but I just wanted to give you uh, that little edit technique to remove people from the background and then it just makes uh, life so much easier. So there's the final image there. I think it's well worth the effort, uh, all those extra steps that you need to do. You can bring your lights closer. You've got so much more control over what you can do with your images. So give it a try and please share your images in the Facebook group.